this. And then screen share, my whole screen. Share. I'm going to start letting people in from the waiting room now. Okay, thank you. Hi, Donna Jo. Hi, how are you, Stephanie? Good, I love your background. Oh, thank you, that was my Memorial Day project. It's <laughs> unfinished, but I'm getting there. <laughs> it looks great. Thank you. Good morning, I'm gonna, good morning everybody. I'm gonna try to figure out why I'm signed in as Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's probably because you used her login, right? Yeah, I think that's probably what I did. You I thought I just clicked the link, but you can maybe... repeat yourself. Hey, okay, everybody. What? Hey, is that Matt? Yeah, it's Matt. I don't. I'm downstairs, so I'm not doing the video thing today. Okay, <laughs> it's understandable. Holly, just to let you know, you can um, if you just hover over your name. Once you click on participants, there should be a more button ah. and you can rename yourself. That's what I did. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Deb. How are you? Doing well. That is an amazing quilt. That is just so beautiful. <laughs> oh, thanks. I commented on it too. I think it's so great. It's the stress reliever. Hello, ladies. Hey there. Hi, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. There are guys here, too. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Oh, microphone.
Good morning, everybody. This is Hallie from CSG. It looks like people are still popping on, so I'm just going to give it another minute. Um, although I'm impressed with uh, how many people we've got on, how punctual, especially since this is 9 a.m. for me. Um, I think we're all much more Zoom savvy than we were at the beginning of this coronavirus. <laughs> Steph, how are we doing in terms of the people who are SVP'd that they were going to be here? Looks pretty good. We had 28 confirmed and we're at 25 right now. Okay, can I get us going? All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to our third and final webinar in the first phase of our work on financing the future of local initiatives. It is very exciting to be at this point with you all. Um, it, less than six short months ago, we reached out with the foundation and with the other um, partners working on the initiative to ask for your advice in helping to develop some tools that would help SJC sites and other sites in the field sustain the work that they're doing. Um, when we sent that outreach, I think none of us had a, any idea how acute sustainability questions would be by the end of this phase of the work. Um, it's not where we would want to be, but we are happy to be at a place where we have a tool that can help with the challenges that sites are facing. So, you know, just to remind you what the big picture idea of what we're trying to do is recognizing the real sort of boon that the safety and justice challenge has been to sites that are looking to reduce their jail populations. This set of resources is designed to help sites sustain those initiatives. And we really are focusing on making the most of federal financing or federal funding resources. So within the universe of sustainability questions, this is in the financing bucket and particularly focused on helping sites make the most of federal fund funding resources. No. Okay. It's going to be a riveting slide that tells you who CSG is. There we go. Everybody surprised, excited? Um, so um, this, our team, I think you've met us before, but on the Council of State Governments Justice Center, we're um, a nonprofit membership association representing all three branches of state government. Um, you've probably encountered one of us through one of our big national projects, either the Stepping Up Initiative, where we work with the National Association of Counties, the American Psychiatric Association Foundation to support local leaders towards measurable reductions in the number of people with mental illnesses in jails. We're also lucky to be the training and technical assistance providers for on bringing together those kinds of partnerships between justice and mental health or behavioral health stakeholders to foster the sort of initiatives that many of you are doing through your safety and justice challenge. And I know a number of you are also JMHCP sites or uh, partners with us on our TA work there. Within the safety and justice challenge, we have been um, doing a couple of different types of projects. 
Um, in addition to the sustainability work we're going to be focusing on today, our team has also been working um, on helping SJC sites learn more about stepping up and becoming an innovator in the Stepping Up Initiative. So innovator counties, if um, you don't know it already, are counties that are able to record accurate data about the number of people with mental illnesses in their jails. And um, particularly with May being Mental Health Month, we're really starting to talk more with sites about the importance of good measurement to be able to set track and reduce the number of people with mental illness in the jails. Um, so one plank of our work in SJC has been working with SJC sites to move them towards being innovator sites within Stepping Up. Um, we've also been working on a speakers bureau that will soon be released. I'm looking at you, Young, um, to talk more about that if you'd like, but that's another resource that's coming out um, from our work within the Safety and Justice Challenge. Um, so my name is Hallie fader Tao. I'm a program director on the behavioral health team calling in from San Diego, California. And I was hoping I could have my um, colleagues from CSG introduce themselves quickly. And I, I know we'll have a bunch of us talking throughout, but just so that you uh, associate the names and faces, I'll go to my left with Steph. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Shaw. I'm a project manager here at the Justice Center in the Behavioral Health Division. And I'll pass it right. to Thomas. Thanks, Tuff. My name is Thomas Coyne. I'm a senior policy analyst here at the Justice Center in our behavioral health division. Um, I'm in Washington, D.C. I'll pass it over to Eunice. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Eunice Kwok. I'm a program assistant here at the Council of State Governments Justice Center. And then I think I'll pass it to Ju. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ju Young from uh, our communications team. Uh, uh, and I work with uh, our behavioral health policy folks. Thank you. Um, Steph, if you can advance, is, is there anyone else from CSG who's on who would like to say hi? Two, three, time to unmute. Okay, Steph, can we get the next slide, please? Um, we could not have asked for better partners in crime policy at the National Criminal Justice Association. Um, Deb and Matt have really worked with us to on a incredibly compressed timeline. They've rolled with a short timeline, throw in a pandemic, and still here we are at the end of May and we've got everything done. Um, so I just wanted, you know, they played a key role in developing the federal funding index that you'll see soon, as well as one of the case studies, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But I wanted to turn it to Deb and Matt to say hello if you'd like. Thanks, Sally. Uh, Deb Matusi with the National Criminal Justice Association. I lead our strategic planning effort and work with both state administering agencies and with local criminal justice coordinating councils and local governments on strategic planning and engaging a broad group of system stakeholders, including behavioral health, as we look at new innovations in the justice system. So happy to be part of the project and thanks for the opportunity to work with each of you. Matt? And this is Matt Wade, and I just want to say hello to everyone. Uh, I'm in uh, Virginia. We hope everyone's doing well. I assist Deb on the uh, TTA grants with NCJA. And one of the cool things that I get to do is talk with all the other states uh, and kind of mine best practices. So hopefully uh, through all this, you'll get to see some of the work that uh, is being done out there and kind of be able to share that amongst your peers. Thanks, everybody. Great, thanks, Matt um, and Deb and Steph. Can we? Yeah, we're going to move over to the sites, and this is the part that I've been terrified about. Um, we're going to try to do a roll call to get a sense of who's on the line. And um, so, if you can, you have in the lower left-hand corner of your um, port profile the red microphone is X out. So please unmute yourself. Um, in order to say hello, you're here. Um, do we have anyone from Pima County, Arizona? Hi, hi I'm Kara Stevens from Pima County. Hi, Kara, welcome. And this is Kate Vesely from Pima County. Hi, Kate. And this is Bill Galarosa with Pima County. 
Fantastic. Um, is there anyone from San Francisco here? This is Truls Neal. Uh, I'm from Portland, but I uh, work for Justice Systems Partners in San Francisco. Great. Thanks, Truls. Hi, Truls. This is Josie Helper Infinity calling from San Francisco. Hey, Josie. Hi. All right. Anyone from Cook County? Hi, this is Rebecca Barboza from Cook County. Uh, Palm Beach County. Did you unmute yourself, Palm Beach County? Anyone? All right. Multnomah County? Uh, this is Sherry Campbell with Multnomah County. Hey, good morning, Sherry. Good morning. Anyone from Allegheny County? This is Molly Morrill from Allegheny County. Good morning. Anyone else from Allegheny? Charleston? Minnehaha? Pennington? East Baton Rouge? I know Lake County is well represented. Good morning, Lake County. Can you all say hello? Hello, I'm Bill Gentis. Hello, Bruce Johnson. Good afternoon or morning. It's Donna Jomacki from Lake County. Hey, thank you. And uh, Kevin um, Kinkire with Justice System Partners, working with Lake uh, and also Charleston. And I put a suit on today, so um, let's see my image there. Well done, well done on the profile photo. Um, Clark County in Nevada. Good morning, uh, Rich Suey, along with uh, Director McMahill and our analyst, Tamara Silver. Great, good morning to you both. And anyone from Buncombe County? Good morning, this is Tiffany Hanacho from Buncombe County. Good morning. Um, so we had some of our site coordinators introduce themselves. I think we had um, Truls and Kevin um, from JSP, right? Was anyone else from JSP, from Justice Systems Partners on? Yes. Yes, this is Billy Grobe. I work with Pima County and I'm with Justice System Partners. Hey, good morning, Billy. Um, can the folks from JMI introduce yourselves, please? Hi, I'm Tom Eberle with the Justice Management Institute. And joining me today are Robin Moshi and Amy Wickman. Hey, good morning to everyone from JMI. Um, from Policy Research Associates. Hi, this is Lisa May from PRI. Good morning. Good morning. Is there anyone from Center for Court Innovation on? Urban Institute. And Vera. Anybody who did not get to introduce themselves. Hi, Hallie. Sorry, I didn't get to my mute quick, <laughs> unmute quick enough. This is <laughs> Rumsey from the Council of State Governments Justice Center. Um, excited to be here with all of you today. Great. Thanks, Aisa. Um, and I think we're all a little grateful that I forgot to do the icebreaker. I was going to ask you all, if Stephanie had a great one, your favorite COVID snack. Um, and I just got too caught up with roll call, um, but maybe that'll be our icebreaker at the end. I think my favorite COVID snack has been berries, but um, all right, great. Thank you very much, everybody. It's wonderful to see you this morning. Um, next slide. So as a reminder, um, what our agenda is today is really to 
sort of do the wrap up on the first phase of our work on sustainability and financing the future and start to get your advice on the dissemination of this work and our launch into our second phase of work focused on financing and sustainability. So what we'll be doing today is first um, showcasing the tools that we've all been working on. It's been a busy winter and spring for our team and we're excited to show you what uh, we've been working on and what will soon be available to you to help with your sustainability efforts. Um, then we are um, going to turn it over to Lake County, Illinois, who got the gold star uh, for volunteering to pilot these tools, not only on a short time frame, but again, during a pandemic and just amazing how they managed to work this through in the first weeks of COVID, figuring that out through remote calls and sort of our new way of working. Um, and Lake County is going to talk to us about their experience using the tools and help us understand and think through together how to use these tools to help sustain the initial investment made by SJC. Um, then we're going to move to what is next. So we'd love to get your thoughts on our launch and dissemination plans. We're also going to preview our next phase of work and um, we appreciated your advice so much in the first phase that we wanted to pick your brains a little bit and think together about how to make the next phase, which includes a learning community around using these tools as useful as possible. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to um, Steph to walk through the tools. Allie, um, so just to kind of set up the next few moments together, I'm going to review the tools from an overarching perspective, their purpose and the content, and then we will do a live walkthrough of the tools on our website. Um, and then we'll hear from Lake County about their experience using the tools, and then we'll open for questions and discussion about the tools and the pilot. So if you have questions as we go through, please take note of them so we can engage um, in those questions as we move through the, to, as we get to the discussion section. Um, so to start, um, we created a suite of sustainability tools to help support the SJC sites in scaling and sustaining your initiatives. To do that, we have three buckets of of tools that we created. So we have a guidebook, which is two components, a planning guide and an investment calculation workbook. We have a federal funding opportunities database that we have in both a web and an Excel version. And then we produce two case studies to help show some real world strategies on how to apply these tools. Um, and so what we'll do is talk about these tools and then review them. So first, I would like to talk about the guidebooks. So the guidebook is, again, broken into two components. The planning guide is a Word document that is a step-by-step -step process of planning for sustainability and scaling. Um, so we do this through a series of activities and prompts and exercises to help facilitate cross-system collaboration. And to do that throughout the guide, we discuss and prompt questions around identifying key partners for sustainability planning, identifying what your program and policy components are within your initiative, and how you measure the impact and success of these components. We also discuss general costs and funding resources that are available to support the initiative. And so the goal is really to engage in discussion and come to consensus about the strategic information needed to really engage in sustainability planning. Um, and at the end of the guide is an executive summary template that helps distill the information in the planning guide into an easy to digest format to help engage with stakeholders and get by the project. And throughout the planning guide, you will be directed to the investment calculation workbook, both in how to use the information in the workbook, but also when to turn to the workbook and engage in those activities. And my colleague Eunice is going to talk through that investment calculation workbook. Eunice? Hello, everyone. So 
we created the investment calculation workbook to help sites develop a data-driven budget for their initiative. This workbook helps sites do this by looking at funding sources and programmatic costs separately, and then walking leaders through a step-by-step -step process of applying funding to costs in a way that makes each dollar go as far as possible. So this workbook is a complement to the planning guide, and throughout the planning guide, you will identify items you need for the workbook, such as funding sources, the program and policy components of your initiative, and what data are used to measure the impact of the initiative. Specifically, the workbook takes you through a series of steps to break down the cost of each program component within your initiative and allows you to allocate different amounts of funding from different sources as needed. Uh, ultimately, this tool will help you see your initiative's costs on a more granular level, what funding sources are available to pay for the initiative, and how to apply funding in a more flexible way when possible, as well as what gaps you might have in your funding plan. Oh, sorry. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Thomas to talk about the Federal Funding Index. Thank you, Eunice. As Steph and Eunice mentioned, uh, so we're always looking to help grantees in the field develop and maintain, um, really sustain their programs to meet their goals. And in this work, as everyone here knows, I can take both time and require very specific knowledge to find just the right federal grant opportunity. So to complement the planning that uh, and you just highlighted, we've created this catalog of more than 60 grant opportunities from the federal government that get at funding around criminal justice, mental health, substance use, physical health, housing, and other related areas. We uh, did not limit this to just grants are open right now. Uh, really help allow for planning around all potential grant opportunities that might come up over the year. And to make this available to a wide audience, uh, we have both a web version that will be walking you through shortly uh, that's easily browsable, as well as an Excel version available for download to keep track of these opportunities for yourself and, as Lake County suggested they might when we spoke with them, uh, help track these opportunities similarly. The Find a Federal Funding Opportunity Database really helps simplify the myriad of federal funding sources um, to help first compile these funding opportunities in one place, also to provide brief overviews and common uses easily plausible, and uh, finally to help give local jurisdictions and organizations enough information such as the uses of the grant, like whether they're worth exploring more. And now I'll turn it back over to Steph. Thanks, Thomas. So um, to support the application of these tools, we developed two case studies that will live as web posts on our website. Um, the first one is about the pilot process with Lake County. So both identifying how the project came about um, and what they were looking to achieve and what they actually did to identify the funding plan that they created. So the specific process steps, but then also the outcomes and achievements that they were able to produce using the tools. Um, and NCJA wrote a great case study uh, about Burn JAG and the SAA. And so, Deb, I'd like to turn it over to you to discuss that. I'm actually passing the baton to Matt. Oh, great. And I'm off of mute, I hope, correct? We can hear you. Good. <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the things I talked about a little bit earlier um, was about the uh, and I love my job. And one of the great things that we get to do is work with state administering agencies um, through the administration of Burn JAG uh, from BJA. And what we put together uh, was a case study that kind of highlights a little bit of, <clears throat> of an overview about what Burn JAG is, but then goes into some examples of uh, localities that are out there that have had some promising practices. Uh, there's one from Colorado, one from Baltimore and Maryland. Uh, there's one from Nebraska. So the intent here, I think, is to really kind of give you guys an overview of the ways that these funds can be used and to highlight some of, you know, the great work that's being done out there. From my end, um, I've been lucky enough to talk with 
almost every one of our SAAs in the last few months. And there's a lot of other great things that are going to be out there that are being done. Uh, and, you know, NCJA is, uh, is here. Uh, we're here to help out. Uh, and that's kind of the way the case study, um, that was the intent that we wanted it to do, is just be an informational tool for you guys to have in your kit. Uh, Deb, what did I leave out there? Anything? Thanks, Matt. I think the only other thing that I wanted to draw attention to is that we recognize that as a small local site that's running a project, applying for a federal grant is complicated. It's cumbersome. A lot of times the reporting, the application process, the, the tracking of financials and meeting all the special conditions can be a pretty heavy lift, especially if you're a project or a site that only has one or two people that are working on it and a lot of volunteers. So getting to know your state administering agency can help you cut through some of that. Um, the SAA is often able to pass through funds, so they'll um, take on that challenge of writing the application to the federal government and drawing down those funds and then can share those resources out through a more streamlined grant making and reporting process than would be required of you if you applied to the federal government directly. So um, the SAA can be your, can be your friend when you're seeking funds for ongoing projects and getting to know them, getting to know the, the planning cycle, uh, when grants come out so that you can line that up with your budget process, I think is a really helpful tool for you as, as you look to build out those programs. The other tool that your SAA provides to you um, that is, I think, beneficial as you're looking at sustainability is data. Most of the state administering agencies collect state level data from a variety of jurisdictions, whether that be incident-based crime data, they may have jail data, they may have um, information on best practices within the states. As Matt said, NCJA collects that information nationwide. So if your initiative is, is one um, around a particular best practice or you're trying to implement a new program and you wanna see who else has done that, um, maybe look at what kind of outcomes they've seen or some of the challenges they may have incurred as they were working through the project, you can come to NCGA and we can help you identify a community that might be in another state or in another region even that has had some success with that type of initiative. So um, please, you know, if you need information on finding your SAA, reach out to us, we're happy to help. And the, the case study that's in there has a link to some of the best practices around the country and just a little bit more information about how to get involved with them. So we, uh, as Matt said, we're here to help. Just let us know what we can do and what questions we can answer. Great, thanks so much, Deb. Okay, so now I am going to do a little demo for us. So hang out with me for one second while I get this up. Okay, you guys can see. So here we are, this is our website. Um, so this is the, the, web, the website for the project, fin Financing the Future of Local Initiatives. And so here you can see we have some general information about the various tools um, and just some brief description about what they are and how to use them. <clears throat> and so first I'm going to look at get, getting started, a guidebook for sustainability and planning. So I go over, we have navigation here on the left, and I can click getting started. And here we have some description about the actual tools, the planning guide, and the investment calculation workbook. In order to download the tools, we have a zip file, which will also live on the page I was just on. Um, and so here we download the zip file, open it up. And so here we have the guidebooks and the federal funding database. So first we're gonna start with the planning guide. Okay, so here is the planning guide. Again, it's a Word document, so, and it's meant as prompts, questions, tables, et cetera. And so the planning guide is divided into seven sections. So here you can see the general content that we kind of touched on earlier. So sustainability committee, data-driven strategy, looking at costs and resources, and the executive summary template. And then we move into the workbook itself, uh, the planning guide itself. So here you can see each 
section has section tips. It's meant to be a quick call out for overarching instructions and general ideas and themes to consider as you move through the activities. So just to kind of show you what this looks like a little bit, we have tables, yes, no questions. Um, we have charts. And so we actually tried to combine a lot of the charts. So there might be a series of steps in the instructions on how to fill out the charts. Um, so I think it's a, um, a good tool to fill out in this way. And we have examples as we go through. And just to kind of preview what these look like a little bit here. And at the end, we have some appendices to help support ongoing work um, with the sustainability and scaling process. Then to turn to the investment calculation workbook. Okay, so here we go. So here's our, oops, oops. So the workbook is cut up into, I think it's nine worksheets and the worksheets all build on each other. So they are formula based and we have some that are, we have some worksheets where you actually fill in information and then we have worksheets that are just formulas to help roll up information. And so those worksheets are color coded to help orient you to what that activity looks like. And to walk through this a little bit, here we have our initiative basics, which, oops. okay. So this is where we start to identify the specific program policy components of our initiative, the funding sources that we have, and th these lists continue to populate throughout the workbook. So for example, here on this sheet, you would fill out the funding sources here would populate, and this would be one of the components that you listed. And then you would continue to build out the worksheet as such. This worksheet is red, so it's just rolling up all the investments that you have. And all of this work is leading towards identifying a funding plan, which I'm walking towards the end here. So here, this is our three-year budget worksheet. I'll try to zoom in out a little bit. Um, and so here you can see we have our funding source totals over the course of the fiscal year. And then we have the program and policy component with the specific operating costs attached to that component. And then you can work to apply the funding that you have available based on operating costs and program and policy components. So again, this is a formula-based workbook and if you tried to delete um, a formula, we got you covered and all the cells are locked. So you can't actually end up um, altering that in some way on accident. So we wanted to make sure we were protecting that aspect of it for the integrity of the activities. Okay, so that is the, a quick demo of the um, investment calculation workbook. And then to turn back to our website. So we just went over getting started and now we'll look at finding federal funding opportunities. So as Thomas mentioned, we have this as both a web version and Excel. And I will show you our web version first. So if you notice at the top here, we have, okay, we have a filter that opens up and shows us various filters we can use to see the federal funding opportunities. So, for example, if I check criminal justice, there are 32 opportunities tagged to this issue area. And I can say apply filter here on the bottom, and it will show me the 32 opportunities with the filter applied as criminal justice. And you can see here that the results populate on the page. If you're interested in learning more about a specific opportunity, more information will load on a separate page so you can keep your search results. And all of the information loads here. This is the same information that is in the Excel document. It's just another way to look at it. 
and you can also actually go straight to the funding announcement page to follow up with even more specific information. A helpful tip is if you wanted to save your results, you can hit this print results button and it will load this preview for you eventually. And then um, you have the full description here so you're able to easily save your results so you don't have to continuously come back to it. Additionally, if you wanted to further filter, you can uncheck and check multiple items. Now, when you do this, it's important to note that it is not a cumulative filter in the sense that there will be 49 results produced. It will only be the ones that match both the county and the IT filter. So for example, if we apply this filter, we see nine opportunities available that meet those two results. And to see all of them, you leave the filters blank and you hit apply filter and you can see there are 62 opportunities here for you. Okay, so now to show you the Excel version of this. So again, back to the zip drive, we open up the Excel doc. And again, it's all the same information. It's just more about how comfortable you are working in various formats. So first we have a tab where we outline the definitions of what exactly we are, are describing in the various columns, which I think is helpful to understand where information lives in the sheet. And next here, this is the actual database. So you can see every single column has a filter. So if you would like, you would be able to filter on a more specific level within the workbook itself. So if I wanted to only see competitive grants, I would open up this filter, uncheck select all, and check the X. And so now my results are filtered based on this. I could also add another filter and just continue to shrink the list down to see what is relevant to me. To clear a filter, you open that filter box back up and then you hit clear that competitive grant filter. Same thing here. And so that helps your sheet reset. So this, again, every single column has a filter. So you're able to really dig in here um, and look at the specific things um, for your initiative. And turning back to, whoops. Turning back to the website, our last section is our sustainability in action. And these, what, this is where the case studies uh, will live as web posts. And so once those are up and loaded, you'll be able to read them. They're about seven, 800 words a piece. So it's meant to be a quick, quick way to get some helpful tips and strategies on real world application. Okay, I am going to, all right, now. Okay, so that was a quick demo on the products and I would like to turn it to Lake County to talk about the tools and working with them during the pilot. Donna Jo. Um, thanks, Stephanie. Um, what we um, really appreciated right away was the, the use of multimedium. So um, we have stakeholders that we would only give them the executive summary. Anything more than two pages, we know we're not going to get their, their attention that we need. And we have um, some of our more um, financial stakeholders um, that will only read Excel. Um, so the tools allowed us to kind of cater it to what we anticipated our stakeholders would want to see, but also understand that it's fully fleshed out with all the different um, aspects of it. 
Um, and one of the, 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 I think when we were very excited about doing this with Stephanie, the first thing we said is, well, you know, we're, we're into our second year of our two year implementation. So what we want to use it for was to plan for a new strategy that we had just started um, planning for. And that was for a crisis center. So uh, some of our um, numbers, we had to actually add pages um, to it, to the Excel to say, how do we operationalize? So this tool, although it was originally designed for a site that's currently operational and how to sustain it, is actually adaptable to how to expand or scale up or scale down some of your, um, in, some of your implementation um, strategies. So it really did cater to all of our different needs um, as we moved along. And the biggest one that, that really helped us is right off the bat, um, it, it, it required us to download or um, document all of our goals and performance metrics and um, put in all of our funding restrictions from different um, funding sources. So it's all in one location and it's accessible at any time because it's um, uploaded in our cloud. Bruce? If, yeah, if I could just, just add, um, so just to give just a tiny bit of background, um, we have been meeting on and off um, for some form of a crisis center for probably about four years, I wanna say. Um, I'd actually like um, much of that time back um, <laughs> because uh, what's interesting is that this pilot actually accomplished so much more than we've ever accomplished in those meetings over the four years with, with key players, with all the right people in the room, um, we didn't have this, this tool. Um, and I think back to the wasted time, I don't want to call it wasted, but, um, but somewhat, um, that we were not uh, defining um, actually what, what turns out to be um, this project plan that we now have um, and we are, it's interesting, we were on a phone call, I think just yesterday, and we were referring back to it. Um, so it, it's, so we're, we're in the midst of choosing a site and, you know, going through all that and we're thinking about budget and everything that, that we had gone through uh, together and, you know, um, fabulously facilitated by Stephanie as well, may I just add. Um, just, it was, it just, I can't tell you the, the value of this tool by the time we were done with the process, um, did give us all those goals and outcomes and metrics, um, but helped us to get the whole view of what this uh, project would entail and put us in a position, maybe most importantly, to gain that sustainable funding for long-term, not just the initial, because we're doing well on the initial, but to think about this long-term, you know, funders want to see a plan. They want to know that something's fully developed, um, and we now have something that's that's developed, um, and it helps us to um, to kind of paint that picture for them. So I see this as as Donna Joe was talking about. You know, who's going to look at this? You know, we have those high level you know entities that are that are going to look at that that executive summary. We are going to have the the people that are looking at the the budget spreadsheets, but we also have funders that are going to look at you know, how um, well thought out our plan is and how we're forecasting, you know, sustainability for the future. Um, and that's just, so when you think about the stakeholders that this is actually reaching, um, it, it's all of us, including getting all the, the members that are invested um, onto the same page that understand. Um, and this was, you know, three minds, you know, from our county um, kind of coming together. Um, I, I have a feeling that um, the rest of our of our team is going to be, you know, absolutely impressed by what our end product is, but also be provided that opportunity to say, what about this and what about that, and continue to grow this um, and have it be in that living document that we want it to be. I'll stop there and shoot over to Bill. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Donna Joe. Stephanie, you were amazing um, in facilitating this. Um, as I told you yesterday, I've never met an audience I didn't want to speak to, so um, I'll try to be as brief as possible. Uh, what, I, what I gathered and, and picked up from it is it allowed really good stakeholder conversations. Um, you know, Donna Joe, Bruce, and myself know or represent um, 
probably everyone in our county's interests in some way, shape, form, or on another. So we were able to sort of synergize a lot from those meetings, Bruce, um, the four years of meetings we had. But it also forced me to think critically about the specific issues around the wellness center. And uh, as, as Bruce alluded to, we were talking yesterday uh, on this specific thing, and we were tunneling down to um, uh, encrypted Wi-Fi for healthcare, uh, health records management. Um, but that's the level of detail, um, and that's, as I looked into it this morning, it's expensive, um, that needed to be in there and needed to be planned for. Um, and it also sort of has, as you showed in the um, spreadsheet, it showed every place where we projected we could get funds from. And it's interesting to see that all in one place. And I think, um, alluding back to what Donna Jo says, is when we get our people together to look at this, um, it's going to be very educational because I think they're going to be seeing it synthesized into one place um, finally. And, and, the, and the beauty of the whole thing is it made it much easier. Uh, I mean, the three of us, it's, I, I think a smaller group is better, but the three of us really, um, I think, had a lot of uh, uh, good ideas and we were able to put it all in one place and capture it. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to, I'm taking it to my coalition, um, of which Donna Joe and Bruce are members of, uh, we have about 200 stakeholders, most of the people who would have been in the room with the pilot. Uh, and we do a video meeting now during our COVID times. And I'm going to do a presentation similar to what you've just done talking about it and show them what we have, um, and hopefully foster some, uh, sort of conversation later on for this. So it really, I mean, the bottom line, it's a pilot, but we're using it. So and that's as far as I can go. Great. Thank you. Thank you all so much for sharing. It was wonderful to work with you. You're a great group. And I'm so thrilled that the tools are continued useful and meaningful for your project. Wonderful. Okay, so I'd love to hear from our other sites or other audience members about any questions you have about the tools or the pilot in general? This is Jules, Neil. This may be an obvious question, but I was looking at the website and it, uh, that resources page with find funding, it looks like you need a, a password to get in there. Do we right. have access to that? Yeah, so at this moment, so our next discussion is about dissemination and launch. And so we will talk about um, the plan to launch the tools and share them broad and widely. So that will come in just a moment. But yes, it's uh, a good question. Any other questions? I'm just trying to be mindful of the time and I know we have um, a few other things we want to get through. Any other questions or, or about the tools? This is Sherry Campbell. I'm just wondering what the plan is for uh, maintaining sustainability on the, um, on the grant um, overviews. Those change constantly. Sure. So. <clears throat> yes, uh, so yes, so the, the federal funding database. So we work to ensure that as much of the information that we showcase is as evergreen as possible. And we are, we have a plan to maintain the database um, over the next few years. And then we'll consider how to continue to keep that updated and relevant um, with current information. Thank you. Hi, this is Hallie. I think Stephanie said this, but just to say it again, the database includes funding opportunities, both those that are open this minute and those that have been open recently. So, for example, the Justice and Mental Health Collaboration Program grant through BJA, that generally is open, is available each year. It, the 2021 just closed last week, but that's included in the funding index. So you know that that is a grant that occurs regularly. So it can be part of your longer term planning. Okay, well, as you have other questions about the tools or the pilot, please reach out to us. 
Um, I'm going to turn it back over Oops. to Ju. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, I saw that, uh, I think someone mentioned that they were wearing a suit. Um, so just to, just a comment on my hat. Uh, I'm wearing this indoors because I tried to cut my own hair and it didn't work. Just didn't work. Anyways, um, so Stephanie mentioned we are planning to launch um, this tool um, and make it public and try to uh, spread word about the tool far and wide um, uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so in the next few weeks, expect um, a follow-up from us um, you know, when news an announcement that the link is now live, um, and also some uh, tools that we'll be sharing uh, that you could use to help promote or amplify the tool um, with your networks and contacts. Um, you know, obviously, this tool is going to be useful for not just SGC sites, but also, you know, people, um, uh, sites beyond the SGC network. Um, so we want to spread the word far and wide. We want to vis uh, elevate the visibility and raise awareness around the tool, um, not just around the launch, but also um, because the tool is evergreen, um, we want to promote it on an ongoing basis. So I know we only have a few minutes um, before the call's up, but I wanted to get people's thoughts. If you have any thoughts or ideas um, on how we can um, promote the tool, um, to not only just the SGC sites, but also um, with other jurisdictions outside of SGC. So if anyone has any ideas or feedbacks or even upcoming opportunities where you think um, it would be good to promote this tool, um, speak up or I'm gonna start calling on people. So. Maybe I can ask the. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Anja. Uh, I was just thinking. Um, besides, obviously, the the, S, the SJC Exchange and then JMI has the National Network for, for Criminal Justice Coordinating Councils. Um, if you could have contact with Grants.gov, um, to because it's primarily federal um, grants that are there. If you could have that embedded in their webpage on not just how to write grants, but um, you know, how to sustain grants, um, they might be interested in having links to it. I was thinking about okay. counties, counties and municipal leagues. And I was even thinking about um, some of the associations like the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Um, these are projects that, you know, there, there's so much happening in our communities that I think exposure to this um, and maybe the examples of how they've been used would be invaluable um, as a place to, to start. Um, I think about money that, you know, communities, counties, and entities spend on consultants to come in and, you know, kind of write a report of information that you already knew. Um, and then, then provide this tool that would then help, you know, help those entities go and, and take it to those next steps for uh, implementation. So it may be out of the box for, you know, International Association of Chiefs of Police and, and others that are doing work in the communities. I think all the justice entities um, would, would find value in this. And National Association of Counties, NACO. Um, and then the, um, the behavioral health community has a national association. Um, I forgot their acronym, um, but they would also be interested in this. This is Charles. I would also say, uh, which I was a member of the American Parole and Probation Association, APPA. The, a lot of those organizations, I'm echoing what other folks are saying, they send out regular newsletters to people. So they disseminate information on a regular basis. Thank you. Um, it's very helpful. Um, does anyone else have any feedback or Stephanie, do you want to move on maybe to the one more, oh. one more. I, maybe the, some of the not-for-profit 
association. So um, there's an entity, IFF, that helps to um, fund um, not-for-profits to build. This would be a, an absolute marriage um, for an entity like them. Yeah. Thanks everyone for all these great ideas. Um, Thank you. I'm taking notes. <laughs> and Hallie, so I'll turn it back to you. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we're, as I said, we're really at an inflection point where we're excited to have coalesced this work into the resource, the planning guide, the resources on the website. Um, and now are moving into the next phase of work, which is going to include a learning community for sites that are interested in using these tools together and learning from each other about how to use the tools, as well as building out enhancements to the tools. And we're looking at both um, the issue raised earlier about keeping the grant information fresh, as well as learning from you all about what makes the tools more useful? Do you, do you want animations? Do you want music? And I'm probably not music, but what, what can we do that's going to make the tools more user friendly with the way that you actually do your financing planning? We're also, um, this is an exciting innovation. We're looking at how to add a lens, an equity lens to the tool to ensure that new investments are um, being considered for underserved communities and that'll be a new lens to this that we hope will also um, enhance both the sustainability of the work as well as strengthen the communities that are um, part of the SJC um, grant initiatives. Um, so we will, you know, please, as, as Ju Young said, you'll hear more from us soon in terms of formal announcements. We're also looking forward to working um, with Travis and the team at PRI um, and Lisa um, on the upcoming Behavioral Health Virtual Summit in virtual Milwaukee um, and talking about sustainability there. Um, and uh, before I say thank you and off we go, I just wanted to give Bria a moment to say anything she wanted to, um, to wrap up this, this phase of the work. Thanks, Hallie. I just um, wanted to express my appreciation to everyone um, who has been part of this process. I know it had to change up a little bit due to COVID, but I think overall in the end, this the piloting tool and the resources that you've all put together and your contributions are excellent. And I really do think it will be a very helpful resource for uh, the SJC network and also more broadly. Um, just on behalf of the foundation, I also think it's a really nice compliment to the sustainability planning that we're in the process of doing. I know you guys have your tool, JMI has their sustainability um, tool as well, and I think those are all really nice compliments all together as we're sort of navigating our way through COVID and knowing and about some of the lack of resources that potentially will be happening. So this is sort of a great way to, you know, not lose that support and know that there are other sources of funding and opportunities out there to help us continue to do the great work. So just thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Great. So thank, thank you, Bria. Thank you to the team here and to our partners in Lake County and NCJA and all of you who have helped in the thinking and development of this. And we're really looking forward to continuing to work together and think creatively as we all need to these days about how to make the most of available funding to serve the communities that we all live in and care about. So thank you all. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And here's my email address. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye now. Thanks.